Because they being mean. They being mean. You guys gonna let him get some? You want some? Check your ears to stick, but. So I came out this morning. Um, last run I did last night, I clogged it up. Um, I hit a a big pile of hay, apparently. How embarrassing! How embarrassing! And it, it wasn't scooping it in. It was getting dark, and I didn't realize that I ended up having just a ton of hay underneath this thing and all over the place. Um, How can this be? Today, my plan is to go out and get as many bales as I can off the field. I got 10 off the field last night. My first bale is still out there, so technically 11 bales. The first bale it didn't tie very tight, so it's probably going to end up spearing it and moving it up here with um, the rest of this hay because the horses have also started pulling it apart. <laughs> I figure. I can accomplish about six bales an hour at the at the pace that I'm going. Part of that is because I'm not leaving the bales in the field. I'm actually pulling them up and I'm and I'm putting them in a row. So I'm dropping all of them in a row uh, up outside of our our pastures because that way the horses don't pick at them and pull them apart. Uh, they're easy to get to when we sell them. I could just I'm in the row. I could just go back up with the hay spear, pick it up, and put it on somebody's trailer for them. So issues with the tractor, and stay tuned because these videos will be coming up. I burnt out the starter, so I'm going to do another starter replacement. Uh, the fuel pump, I'm not sure. Sometimes I feel like the fuel pump isn't working, and it's a really old fuel pump. They're only $35 on Amazon, so I went ahead and ordered another fuel pump. I'm going to rebuild my carburetor. My carburetor is pretty beat up at this point in time, but carburetors are about three or $400 on these. So I'm going to rebuild that carburetor then I'm not sure if my ignition coil and distributor cap, all of that is really old. I'm saving that for last as far as the fuel system repairs are concerned. Um, there, I, I was having some oil issues yesterday. Those are the rings in the engine. I'm going to do a an engine overhaul on this, but the kits, the kits range between $300 and $700. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two kits, but I'm guessing, you know, the more expensive kits are going to have the better seals. That's important. So I'm going to wait on that because that's something it's going to take me a long time to do. It might be like a winter project that I that I work on, but I'll rebuild the engine, uh, increase the compression and stop some of that oil burning. Uh, what happens is as I get low on oil, I start having issues with uh, horsepower and it shuts off. <laughs> that's that's a long term project, probably this winter. Um, the fuel system, I, when, I, when I do the carburetor and I do the fuel pump, I'm going to take everything apart. I'm going to take the, uh, the valve off of the, the tank and just make sure that there's nothing in there that's clogging up my fuel system because sometimes I have fuel leaking out. That's the bad carburetor. Sometimes I'm not getting any fuel at all. The dark side clouds everything. As far as the baler goes, I've been pretty happy with the baler. Uh, it's worked well for me. Once I figured out how to use it, there were some user errors, obviously. Uh, that's, I, I've, I've been bringing it up here to unclog it so at least the horses can eat the hay. They seem to like the hay, which tells me it's, it's got some good nutrients in it. If they're leaving a fresh field to come up here and eat hay, you know, hay is good. <laughs> Besides that, I don't really have anything else to say. Truly wonderful the mind of a child is. It's going to be raining today for the next week. I'm going to try and get as many bales off the field as I can. I've estimated that the smaller field is going to fill us with about 30 bales. So if I could get another 10 and say I cover two thirds, at this point I'm going to be happy with that. I still need to do the brakes on the tractor. I, I figured out that when I'm going downhill, the baler itself will kind of break me a little bit because it's it's scooping up the hay. 
that hasn't been as big of an issue as I thought it would be. There was one point yesterday where I did lose a little bit of control and went down a hill really fast. I do want to get, before I do the other part of the fields, I do want to get those fuel uh, things fixed on the tractor and I do want to get my brakes fixed. So those videos will be coming up. But what you have Until I get started on that, um, I think that I'll be able to get probably, if I could get 10 bales, if I can do 15 bales, I'll be excited. If I get another 20 bales today, then I'm good. If there's any hay left on the field, I'll leave it out there. Nick, it's why you fail. This is our smaller field. I started with the smaller field. When I do the bigger field, I'm probably gonna split it in half because I don't want to have to deal with getting, until I perfect what I'm doing. Then, only then, a Jedi will you be. I don't want to get into having to bail more than 30 bales at a time. Not ready for the burden for you. It's very strenuous and a lot of hard work. That incomplete was your training. And I'm still learning. No more training do you require. Already know you. That what you need. This is only my second time haying. This is my very first time that I have actually hayed and bailed without having to the employ the help of another. Rejoice for those around you who transform into the force. Which is very exciting. I think that today I will be able to accomplish a lot more than I did yesterday because I've, I, I'm, I'm starting to know what the problem areas are, how to address them and just keep things going to get me off the field. May the force be with you. When I was cleaning this out this morning, I shot a quick little video, uh, just kind of giving you some, some pointers on the baler. What you have learned. So I'm gonna show that clip real quick and then we'll just see how uh, far I can get. May the force be with you. If your baler clogs up, it's a lot easier to come in from the back side here, remove the roll, that was my roll over there, and then pull it out from this side. You'll find hard clumps in there, like this, or just bunched up on these, trying to pass through. You gotta get those out for the grass to start moving freely. And because the grass has been being pushed into here, uh, it's just easier to pull it from this side. If you try and get it from the other side, it's not gonna work. Anytime you work underneath here, make sure you put up your safety levers on either side. Uh, you can hear the hydraulics creaking on the tractor. If those hydraulics go, these will stop it from falling down on you. Part of the reason why these things clog is uh, number one, that your grass isn't dry enough. Life creates it, makes it grow. If you don't have the right moisture content of the grass, it won't bail. Luminous beings shall we, not this crude matter. It also helps to get a roll started on some lighter mounds. Once you have that roll and they're really rolling, it'll help scoop all that hay through. But if your grass is too moist, it's going to clog up anyway. The other thing is the belts. The belts all need to be the same length and they all need to be in good condition. I don't have a problem with belts here. They're in pretty decent shape. This clog, I believe, happened. It was uh, in the the evening, around eight, and I think that there was just too much moisture getting back into the hay, going into the evening hours, and it and it clogged it up. If you, there was also a small sisal branch in there. Those could cause it to clog. Although most of them will pass through or just won't pick them up. But from the front side. You can see how much hay it dragged with it once it clogged. So you need to keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't clog. I've also realized that with a Ford 3000 full bale, it's not gonna happen. So what I'll do is I'll stop it right about here. So this is um, my quarter marks, one or third marks. 
And these would be my quarter marks. One, two, three, four, five, or, yeah. But what I'll do is I'll stop it when I get somewhere right in here. So I'll try and ride it to this line if I can. So I have four fifths of a bale. If not, I'll let it go down just a little bit into here. I'll listen to the tractor, hear what it's telling me, and then stop. Because the other thing is we have hills, I have to pull this thing back up a hill. So full bale is going to be very heavy. It's got a lot of tension on your belts, and therefore you've got the PTO working its tail off as well as um, the motor trying to pull it up a hill. So on a 40 horsepower tractor, I wouldn't go, I'd try and stop it just right around in here. Otherwise you're gonna get stuck. The second it comes past this black line and starts going for the full bale, you start to get stuck. It's not worth it. Size matters not. Look at me. Does me by my size, do you? Hmm? Hmm. Those are the only pointers that I really have on this right now. I've got some work to do. It's supposed to rain today, and I've still got a lot of my field down. It's energy surrounds us. So I'm hoping that after I clear this out and go in for a cup of coffee, and the hay that's on the field won't be damp from the evening anymore, and I can get the rest of it up. Uh, I can usually do about six bales an hour once I get going. So I'm hoping I can get most of the field up before it rains today. No, try not, do. So another issue I had, and, I've, and I only ran into this issue once, was uh, you can see on this top wheel here where there's some twine and the twine had wrapped all the way down to there. When you're watching your guide, you bring it all the way over to cut it at the very end. But when you're twining, you actually don't want to go like much more than like there to tie off the end and then bring it all the way over to cut it. If you bring it over to the black line, that's where you're going to end up with a situation like what I just showed you. So I bring it here, count to about 12, bring it here, count to five, count to 10, five, 10, five, and then another 12 wraps there. And I might be over wrapping my bales, but I just want to make sure that they're tight and they don't fall apart. I'd say you go through a roll on about 15 bales doing it that way. So I ended up getting about 22 round bales off of our small pasture. There's probably still another three to four out there, but the tractor just keeps acting up and it's the, the hay that's left is in the hardest parts of the field to get to. And so to make matters worse, now the tractor battery is is dying so i have to keep going over and jumping it with the truck and it's just getting too tricky if you end your training now if you choose the quick and easy path as vader did you will become an agent of evil so i'm not going to worry about the last three or four bales out in the field i've got 22 well there's 21 here there's one out in the field that i dropped um so 22 bales all together uh, not bad. This again was my first time, um, well, it was my second time cutting, tethering, and raking hay, but it's my first time baling hay. We had a square baler before I tried baling it myself. Do or do not. There is no try. It didn't work. We ended up having to hire somebody to come in and bale it for us. So, this was my first time actually operating a baler and completing the task on my own. So I'm pretty proud of it. This is our smaller field based on the size of this field and how long it took me to bale. I'll probably split our bigger field up into three sections. That way I'm not overwhelmed. And on the third section, I may just brush hog it at this point because of the amount of weeds that are coming up in that section. But I've got at least two good sections about this size that I could go ahead and take care of. That would give us roughly 60 bales to sell off of this first cut, which is substantially less than what I had originally anticipated by, and I anticipated done doing the whole thing. And um, it's just been a treacherous task getting going, but that's how it is when you start off doing something like this, you have to learn. You must unlearn what you have learned. To figure it out and figure out what works. It's all, you know, a matter of technique and our tractor is definitely a matter of technique. Oh, no different, only different in your mind. 